So if you wanted to do this procedure with the most minimal equipment possible, and again, if you're using minimal equipment or co-opting equipment that's not really meant for this procedure, it's not gonna be as easy, it's not gonna work as well, but it's doable. You'll remember back to our slide in the surgical airway block where we did talk about that there have been uh, studies done using pens, particularly they used a paper made pen. If you also look at the size recommended by the TCCC committee for the inner and outer diameters of the endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube you use for the surgical airway, although the exact size that's desired uh, is a little bit smaller than this pen, the actual inner and outer diameter of this pen is very, very close. All right, so to get this pen into the configuration we need, basically we just need it as a metal tube. So we're gonna take the tip off. We're gonna get all the guts off. We're gonna unscrew the back. There still is a little bit of a plunger in there. The easiest thing to do is just to push all that through. And then at this point, so now we've got our tracheostomy tube. And again, it's not ideally sized, but it's pretty damn close. So we've got our trachea, our standard orientation. I'm on the right side of the casualty at the head, head, feet. I'm gonna put my finger, my palm on the chin, my thumb and middle finger on the uh, thyroid cartilage. I'm gonna march down from the chin to the Adam's apple to the thyroid notch. I'm gonna fall off of that into a little dead space. Then I'm gonna feel a cricoid cartilage. That dead space is the cricothyroid membrane. Cricoid cartilage, the whole way down to tracheal rings, jugular notch, back up tracheal rings, up to the cricoid cartilage, cricothyroid membrane. I'm gonna get my finger out of the way and I'm gonna need something sharp. And again, for this procedure, much like holding a scalpel, I would hold this knife like we would hold a scalpel and I'm gonna cut through all of that overlying soft tissue. And I'm gonna to try to use my fingers to separate it out. Obviously, even sharp knives, they're not as sharp as scalpels. And because I don't have forceps, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of blunt dissecting with my fingers. And I'm gonna cut down until I feel that cricothyroid membrane. It's right under my finger now. Then I can use the tip of the knife and I can breach through it, put my finger back in it. Again, we always want something in that hole. Then we can take our tube and we can go ahead and we can stick that in the airway and we're gonna end up seating it. Now, it doesn't have a curve or a bend in it, it's rigid, so it's just sitting in this airway. And then you're gonna to have to find a way to secure it. I'm going to make the argument if you're using this kind of a backwards witch doctor technique, somebody's gonna to have to hold this, okay? It's in the cricothyroid membrane. So again, that is one more way you can use our favorite pen, the Zebra 701, for another medical procedure. You've seen me use each one of these surgical airway tubes to perform a cricothyrotomy. What I want to show you now is the similarity of all these procedures. Okay.